The abbey kitchen was near the manor house where the Aldermaston slept. Like all of the buildings on the grounds, it was worked of large blocks of heavy sculpted stone. It was a spacious square building dimpled with half columns protruding from the walls and a steepled roof. Greetings, this is Sean, and today I'm continuing on with the walls for the uh, kitchen project that I'm doing. And um, what I'm doing here is uh, trying to find the center of this, uh, this particular wall. So what I've done is I, I take the, uh, the um, stick there and put it from corner to corner. And then, of course, where the two lines meet is where the center of the board is at. And... Uh, what I'm doing there is just now marking the exact center of spot. And then I'm going to take my, um, my uh, square, my speed square, and uh, draw a line down the center there to indicate, which I didn't really need to make a line like that, because uh, you'll see later on that that line shows up as well as the two lines from the uh, from the uh, finding the center as well but what I'm trying to do is find the center spot and the center lines because when you do tile tiling and brick work you're supposed to start from the center and work your way to the outside which I kind of do but I end up later on changing the way I do that so really what I'm doing at this point is moot <laughs> and my my uh, table is too close to my desk there, and so I can't use the speed square to get that line drawn. So I just take my stick back. And then here, oh, well, no, that's later on. Never mind. I'm just continuing on the line from the speed square. And now I'm just marking the four points uh, of the center of each of the walls, each of the sides. And now what I'm doing is this is the size of brick that I'm going to use. And I'm, I, like I said in my previous one, I'm not going to be using these bricks to make the walls, uh, obviously, because I'm making them out of foam. But that's the size of the brick that I want. And so what I'm doing is I'm lining all the bricks up from that center point that I made. And now I'm just going to mark where the grout lines are for each of those bricks. And then uh, what I'm doing is I'm going up the side to measure or to make marks for where each of the courses is going to be of each brick. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my square or my uh, stick here, my straight edge, and um, mark the courses across the across and I'm taking this extra brick here to mark on the other side where it needs to go to so that it's a straight line across and so now I'm just grabbing my speed square again and uh, drawing a line like a you can see there. And basically that making the marks with the bricks on the opposite side was, I didn't need to do that either. I kind of changed my mind a lot during this project, this part of the project. Because uh, some things just seem to be easier when I do it a different way. And so now I'm going to take my straight edge and continue those lines across like I did before.
and then I got to looking, and it's like things weren't lining up, and they weren't looking straight from... Now, granted, the thing is curved, but that board actually ended up being warped, and so I ended up not having to not being able to use it anymore so i don't know if everything else is going to be off because of that which later on things are off quite a bit on some some of them so anyway i took this other one which i know is a little bit straighter and um, uh, continued the lines across but uh, the um, you can see that the piece of foam looks like it's warped it's actually because i'm using a wide angle lens so i can get the whole thing in the screen which is why it looks curved but it's actually straight um, so, anyway, um, now what I'm trying to do is figure out where the bricks need to go, uh, as far as, you know, lining them up, because what I'm going to do is, um, I'll take my speed square and line them up with these marks that I'm making now and go up to every other line that I made across to make each brick pattern in the foam. You'll see what I mean. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking half the brick and going across and so that they're staggered going across. But then when I get to the end, it's like the gap there is different from the beginning gap. So I know I'm off on my measurements and everything else, but it's close, and now I'm just kind of hemming and hawing. Do I want to start over? Do I need to redo that? Do I need to make it a different one? Do I need to make the third row, you know, a different thing completely? And so I'm just kind of deciding right now which way I want to go with my bricks. And I just decided I'm just going to leave it the way it is and continue on. So now I'm going to take my speed square again. And like I say, I'm going to go every other line going up, starting on the bottom, and then skipping a row, going, drawing a line, skipping a row, drawing a line, etc., etc. And my wife calls me to breakfast. So here I am back from breakfast, continuing on. So I'm just obviously sped it up a little bit. And so I'm just going across and starting at the, I think I'm doing the second row up and going up. And then I'm going to go back and start at the bottom and work my way all the way up to the top. This is kind of how I made the bricks in my, uh, for my steam comp steampunk conservatory the brick walls for that you, you can see the uh, I'll put a link up above so you can see that if you want these are going to be made very similarly anyway <clears throat> excuse me I'm taking this tool which I think is for carving clay or for uh, uh, you know, sculpting clay with I don't know actually what it is or where I even got it from but I'm taking that bladed end and I'm just making each of these lines deeper so that they're more more pronounced as you'll see here in a second my hand was in the way And I'm not too worried about that. That's the top edge, and it's going to get a facade over the top of it anyway, so I'm not really worried about how that's going to look. But, yeah, if anybody wants to count it, that's an oopsie. <laughs> and, um... tell you what that little tool made my hand cramp so bad doing this now what I'm doing is I'm going across the, the line uh, 
the the foam there with the making the big lines just so you can see how it's done how I did it and then I'll speed it up here to do the rest of them and I'll give you a couple of different angles to to watch too while I'm doing this I decided to go across first instead of up and down because this is actually not the first wall that I've done. This is the second wall that I've done. But um, I found that if I went across first instead of the up and down ones, it has less tendency to skip around and it's a lot easier to do. Whereas if I hit like there where there's a line that's carved into it, the tool has a tendency to want to skip out of the off the line a lot more. So that's why I'm going across like this first. There you can see my messy desk in all its glory. <laughs> yes, I'm a Mac user too, by the way. Now I'm doing the up and down lines. And later on you'll see I switch from this tool to a large mechanical pencil. Uh, my hand was just cramping up, like I said before, uh, just way too much to, to keep holding this little teeny tiny uh, tool. And and actually worked just as well as this did, so the rest of the walls I'm going to end up using my pencil instead of this thing to make my grout lines. So, anyway, I'm going to speed it up here, go through this quicker. Actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a different angle. So you can see a little bit better, a little bit closer up. That's how deep I'm going in. Quite a ways in. I want I want some good grout lines in there and be able to fill it with some color and whatnot. You'll see. I'm, this is going to be the second of the third. The third part is going to be my painting and finishing the walls and texturing the walls and, and that type of thing. So you can see that a little bit better. So, because this is already going to be a really long video. See, my hand's starting to cramp up. <laughs> Yeah, I made a few lines, a line a little bit incorrectly there, and so that's why you see so many lines there, which I'll take care of later. I'll turn them into cracks. <laughs> anyway, here you can see I'm using the pencil, and like I said, the pencil ended up actually working a little bit better. It was easier to get to go back and forth. It was a lot smoother of a surface for one thing, going through the lines, and so I'll probably end up using this method for the other two walls, like I said before. And I'm not too worried about the wall, the lines that are there by the doorway. Uh, there's going to be um, an archway that goes around that, uh, like a door frame almost, that I'm going to put on the outside. So um, it'll, I'm not too concerned about those.
Same with the ones on the very end, like that one that I'm doing right there. It's going to get covered over by something as well, which you'll see maybe in the next video or in the future. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, the reason why I'm doing this on this one is my original video that I did for the first wall didn't turn out very well. So that's why I'm, I'm actually refilming this a second time. But uh, I do want to show you what the other wall looked like because I did get some footage, a little bit of close up and some of the mistakes that I made on it as well. So that's coming up here in a minute. This was the first wall I did where I where you saw me drawing the lines, uh, the diagonal lines to make the center and and whatnot. But um, you can kind of see the the diagonal lines there. Yeah, I had a little oopsie there, so I'm going to turn that into a crack in the brick. And as I mentioned before, those lines I didn't need to make them that long. I didn't mean to make, don't even need to make them as long as what you see on the screen with the white lines right there. But anyway, um, those will be get covered up by texture, texturizing. And then those three holes there, uh, those are going to get covered over, like I mentioned before, along with the lines that are of the grout lines that are there next to them. Those will probably get covered over as well. So. Anyway, um, thanks so much for watching. Have a better day. We'll see you in part three.